So I'm grateful that you're all here this morning and uh, we'll ring the bell. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, <clears throat> that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They're almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you at the rock at Hora. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and the river because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the psalm together. I hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, that which we have heard and known and what our forefathers have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zon. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the water stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the cliff and the water gushed out like rivers. Okay. The second reading is from Philippians. If in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. But in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as to be exploited. He himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him
Let's finish that. I think Lydia's um, bandwidth was pretty low. So, um, therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? And a man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. 
but later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your mind and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In my words, be your word, O God, creator, redeemer, sustainer. The main characters in today's gospel story are a couple of real stars, aren't they? They are the kinds of kids I'd rather not acknowledge as being my own. Uh, the second son reminds me of the child that who you asked to bring in the groceries and he promises to do it. And when you go back to put things away, you find that the bags are still in the car and the ice cream is melting in the trunk and he is now kicking his soccer ball in the living room. The first son is just the opposite. When you ask him to mow the lawn, he says, no way, mom, my friends and I are going swimming. I'll do it later. Maybe, maybe. So you finish putting away the groceries and you kind of stir up a pretty good mad at both of them now when all of a sudden you hear the lawnmower running. Typical kids, right? You wish for once they would just do what you ask without all the folderol that goes along with it. Do you know these kids? I do. Truth is, sometimes I am both of them. In the gospel story today, Jesus equates this second son to the scribes and the chief priests. This son says, yes, Father, I will do the work you ask. And then he doesn't have anything to do with it. He talks a great story, looks good doing it, but there is no action that follows the words. It is more important to look cool than to be cool. Jesus likens the first son to the tax collectors, the prostitutes, and the known sinners. What a great group that is to belong to. That son says, no, Father, I'm not going to do that. And later on, he regrets what he said, and he goes out and he does the work. His no changes with repentance, and he works to make things right and to be right. Jesus is days away from being arrested and crucified in this story. He has come into the city in this celebratory manner, probably having stolen or at least taken somebody's donkey to ride into town with. People have been caught up in this electric energy that just is generated by his presence. But he has also thrown the money changers out of the temple with a whip he made out of a leather cord. He has healed the blind and cured the lame inside the walls of the temple. And he has challenged those in control of his authority, with his authority. This bit about the two sons comes up because the chief priest had come to Jesus to try to put him in his place. These people are not the Jews or the people. They are a group of very powerful thugs the priestly aristocracy, and they're in collaboration with, but under the ruthless control of the Roman Empire. Some things never change, do they? These bullies challenge Jesus with a question to trap him, and Jesus turns the question back around on them. There's a famous story of a student who asked a rabbi, why do rabbis always answer a question with a question? The rabbi thought for a moment and he said, so what's wrong with the question? Jesus' story here ends with a question. And when they refuse to answer, they trap themselves. To say that tax collectors and prostitutes and sinners would go to heaven before them 
is a shocking way for Jesus to rebuke them. Tax collectors and prostitutes are completely outside the bounds of Torah and therefore outside the bounds of salvation and redemption. They are no better than the mangy dogs who run down the street. They are the unclean and they have absolutely no claim on God unless for some unimaginable reason Jesus comes out of nowhere and says they do. And that is exactly what Jesus does over and over and over again from then until now. It is not to say that the others won't be there. Nowhere does that happen or that be, is that said. It just won't be on their terms or with their sense of the proper order of things that once they're there where they think they belong, then maybe they'll pull in a few others. No. The reason? Those tax collectors and prostitutes and known sinners had repented when they met John the Baptist in the Jordan River. They had been forgiven their sins. They were the worst of the worst, and they came in droves to John because John offered them something that they could never have found in the world they lived in forgiveness, wholeness, peace, and joy. All those things that God wants for us. The chief priests wouldn't have anything to do with Jesus. And although they reportedly were doing the work of God, they did not accept the forgiveness offered them. It did not go deeper than just the words, oh yeah, we're forgiven. They said they would be like the second child, but they never took to heart the one thing they needed to do. Repentance wasn't anything they needed, they felt, because they were too good for it, or it had already been done. How sad, how truly sad. Can you find yourself in the story Sometimes we talk a great line like the second son, and yet there is little or nothing to show for it. At other times, we are as disobedient as the first kid, yet through repentance, we are returned to God. If tax collectors and prostitutes can be forgiven, so can chief priests, and so can those of us who find ourselves carrying on one way one day and the other way the next. Another way to consider this parable is to ask the question, have I been forgiven or can I be forgiven for who I am and what I have done and what I have not done? All too often, many of us fail to embody in our lives what we say we believe with our words. And all too often, our confession is just words and that true deep repentance doesn't go anywhere deep enough to change us, to transform us, to radically shift us from one place to another. We've all been there. When I know I'm right and you're wrong, when it has to be my way or my rules, when I only look out for myself and when I seek success at the expense of others, when hurtful things are said and not retracted as soon as they're said, when I do what I want instead of what God wants. Where is the peace and the joy in that? Like the first child, there have been times when I have said no to God and to others, and then I have regretted and repented and moved towards reconciliation. Thankfully, in our repentance or our turning around, our actions have spoken much louder than the original words. When that happens, I am filled with peace and I am filled with joy. I don't like to think of myself as a chief priest or an elder, much less a tax collector, a prostitute, or a known sinner. None of us do. I don't like thinking of myself as being like either of the two sons, but I am. We all are. I wish I could always say yes and mean it and follow through, but I don't. I know that God is far more interested in what I do rather than what I say, although it would be easier on everybody if those things jived more often than they do. 
at a time like now when words are tossed around like grenades and our actions often inflict pain on others, I wonder what we're missing by not going down to the river to have John baptize us and make us whole. And I don't mean that in the sense that, yes, we've all been baptized, so what's the point? I mean it in the sense that conversion happens all the time. Repentance happens all the time. At least it's offered all the time. And for us, symbolically, each week in the confession, or just among friends, or just with yourself and God, to think that you have that invitation to go down to the river, to be washed and made clean again, is a great, great gift. It is the gift of wholeness, the gift of redemption, the gift of peace, the gift of joy. Our coming up out of the water might bring us that peace and joy in the midst of the dread and the fear that is swirling around us. That is, after all, what Jesus wants for us, deep peace and deep joy even in the midst of the craziness that's going on around us. That is truly the kingdom or the realm of God. That is where we can go and be in the midst of all that's happening that seems so filled with dread and terror and fear. Maybe this parable is attempting to tell us that repentance is always possible. Peace and joy are always possible. And God is far more interested in what we do than in what we say. I don't know about you, but I am grateful for those moments of grace. And I invite you to seek out and search for them this week. Find them in the oddball places that grace just pops up out of nowhere. Seek them in your actions, not just in what you say. And be reminded that the deepest thing that God wants for you and for me and for all of us is that forgiveness, that repentance, that deep, deep peace, and that deep, deep joy. That is where we are all saved. And that, my friends, is very, very good news in a world that's trying very hard to tear us apart. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I invite you to join me now as we recite the Nicene Creed found on page five of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people. 
Let us offer our prayers for the church and for the world as we pray to the God whose vineyard we tend and whose kingdom we serve, saying, Hear us, O Holy One. For the church, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Greg, our bishop, and Patty, our priest, that we may more and more put on the mind of Christ and empty ourselves into God's loving care and the services of others. Hear us, O Holy One. For this parish family, that we may not only speak of God's way of love, but sincerely commit ourselves to living that way as faithful disciples. Hear us, O Holy One. For peace in all places of conflict, that God will touch the hearts and minds of leaders at every level and guide them to serve others with justice and love. Hear us, O Holy One. For the healing of the earth, that God will inspire us to act boldly in addressing climate change and other abuses of the earth, that generations to come may share in the bounty of God's creation. Hear us, O Holy One. For all who are recovering from hurricanes and wildfires, that God will keep them safe, strengthen their spirits, and fill their hearts with courage for the future. Hear us, O Holy One. For all those who are persecuted for their beliefs, for the victims of war and violence, and also for those commended to our prayers. Remembering especially. Especially this morning for Niall, Grayson, Pat, Lois, Bill, Kathy. That they may find healing love through the ministry of others. Hear us, O Holy One. In thanksgiving for the life and example of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, that inspired by her witness, we may always do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. Hear us, O Holy One. For all the departed, remembering especially. that they may be exalted with Christ in heaven and confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hear us, O Holy One. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Mary the God-bearer and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord, our God. God and master of the vineyard, hear our prayers and be at work in us that we may do your will on earth with joyful and obedient hearts and share in the consolation of your spirit through Jesus Christ, our savior, amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Uh, this morning, as we offer our gifts of uh, financial care for the Ministry of St. Clair's, uh, I invite you to do that as you are able. I also offer, uh, invite you to hold out your hands together in front of you and offer to God the gift that you bring this morning in gratitude and thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life. And I also invite you to raise up if you happen to have a prayer shawl or a 
beanie or a, whatever you have been knitting or crocheting that you would like to offer up in gratitude as we present to God with gladness the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please join me as you are able to offer the prayer when communion is not possible. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection, and I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. I'm praying the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children and the poor. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you this day and always, amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.